Okay, you guys. Uh, we are back in Blackboard and under Unit 2, Exercises. Click on that. Daily Work Project 1. And we're going to start on the first model, the tool slide model. This is what I want to download. So I'm going to open this PDF. And I'm going to open this in Acrobat so that I can bring this over here with my inventor. And then I'm going to use this as my input sheet. Without further ado, we're going to switch over to the big screen. All right, and I'm going to bring this PDF, this uh, PDF over here. All right, and that might help us a little bit to understand the input as to what we're doing on our screen. Okay, so here we go. Get rid of that. All right, so we're when you start a part, it throws you into a sketch, and this is already projected. So the next thing that I want to do, though, is I want to have an X and Y representation that goes, I want to project the axes that go right through this point to use for my X and Y so that I kind of am going to model around the center point of the part. And the reason that I do that is that I might use those origin planes that we talked about over here. We can still see them and select them, but they don't have to be shown up. I can select them anything out of the model tree or the model browser. Now, if you hit your X up here on your model browser, it goes away. Just hit your plus right here, and that's called a model browser in Inventor. Okay, so the first thing that Kim does, and I'm going to say this so many times, and I'm going to ask you, and you're going to remember this for the rest of your life, is I project geometry. If I'm sketching on my XY plane, so I'm going, to, I'm going to look at my sketch. So I can say, look at, you remember this little thing? Look at the sketch. And it looks at the front view. So normally it's going to be in this manner. You're not going to have to do that. I've been mucking around with this screen a little bit. So what I'm going to do is project geometry. I'm on my XY plane. So I could project, project the axes or the edges of the top two plane. I'm sketching always in my first sketch on my XY plane. So I can project, watch what happens. Project geometry. I'm selecting the top of the button, the first two, every time on the first sketch because I'm not projecting the edges of that. I'm sketching on that plane. Now I have my XY planes. Now if I hit, I have to hit escape because it stays in this. So you're going to get very comfortable with your escape button. Right next to it might be your F1 button, which gets you to the inventor help thing, which can get or Autodesk help thing gets a little annoying. But if we just had a grid, we wouldn't be able to select these. Now, I can right-click and change that to construction. I can do all these things to anything that is here. And you see that that is projected geometry. That's an icon. That's a constraint that said that this is projected from something. So I can't, I can't really get rid of that unless I take that constraint off. So constraints hold things down. Down at the bottom of our screen, we have a show all constraints, which is your F8 button. And F9 gets rid of constraints. So F8 is not ortho, it's show constraints. F9 gets rid of them. This shows the tolerance. If you want to display the tolerances set up, 
This snaps things to a grid, which you would have to set up. This slices material out from in front of your sketch. We'll use that later. This is a cool one. This shows what you have not locked down. It shows what things can move. And then this relaxes constraints and dimensions so that you can drag them around. But you don't want to leave those relaxed. You want to, I don't really show that button very much. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do when I look at this part, what do you think the first thing that you would create in this part would be? The base. The base. A lot of people like to build up from the bottom up, right? That's a good, that's a good starting point. You could start from this block and build this next. Doggone it. But you cannot start with a hole. You have no material. So I'm going to draw this. And I'm going to use the dimensions in here, and I'm going to highlight them as I go. So I'm going to turn my highlighter on. Now, one cool thing about Inventor is we can draw rectangles overlapping each other and not have to trim them out. So I'm going to start with a rectangle for the base, and I'm going to let it. Do you see that when I have projected things, it will snap and lock to it? My little cursor is snapping. So I can snap to this point, and maybe that wants to be my further lower left corner. Now I can draw this just whatever size and put dimensions in, but if I can also draw it to size this way. So the overall length of the bottom is five, and you don't have to put dot zero zero. It's going to assume that. And then if you want to go from the X to the Y, you hit the tab button. That, sh that shifts between things. If I have ta hit tab again, I can go back and change that again. And this bottom slab is 0.75 thick. So now let's hit escape because it's still in a rectangle. And double click our metal mouse button that zooms to fit. And you can scroll in, scroll out, whatever you want to do to um, get that larger. Now, if I want to make a rectangle again, if you hit enter, that repeats the last command. I'm in a rectangle again. You see that's depressed? So I could start right here. This dimension right here, the 1.25 is from the bottom. So I don't want to have to do math. I'm going to put this in just exactly like it's drawn. So 1.25 in the X, I'm sorry, in the Y, but it's 0.25 if you see that in the upper left-hand corner wide. And then I'm going to hit tab and 1.25 tall. Oh. Now I could have drawn this with lines, you guys. Something that I'm going to instill on in you guys right away is that where your dimensions are in your sketch is where they will be when you retrieve them in your drawing. So if you drag this up, you may not be able to see it move but do you, when you see that little move cursor and i'm holding my left mouse button down and i drag it up it's kind of in a gray scale when you do that so it's kind of hard to see but you see that four way and drag that out and i want do you see that these start at these points this when you draw rectangles like this it doesn't know where your dimensions want to be i want a gap right here so if i hit escape and I grab this dimension and delete it. My delete button isn't working on this. So you can right click and do anything you want on here. You can make it driven, which is reference. You can go into its properties and make it a different precision. Now I want you to notice that that turned blue. When I put in these dimensions, it means this rectangle is totally dimension and it knows where it is because it locked down on the origin point. It needs to know where geometry is to our origin in some way, the projected geometry or whatnot. And down in the lower right hand corner, it says one dimension is needed. This is not a fully constrained part. It needs one dimension. If you don't know what dimension is needed, remember this little button up here. And I don't ever want to show constraints that could be added. I just want it to apply a dimension. You see that pop in there? And if I don't want it to be in that manner, I can remove it. And I can put it in the way that I want. So I want to put it in 
I can select a line and it makes it from its two endpoints. Or I can select two endpoints if they're staggered. So maybe I, and you know, the spacing we can automate, but these things that are going to be in the body of the part, I might want to delete that. And then dimension it, select the line, and it tells you how far it is from one point to the other. You don't have to select two points if you don't want to. But this ensures that I have my gaps from the edges of my part. Now I'm ready to extrude that. I can do that two ways. I can say finish sketch. And now we're in the 3D model mode because we have a sketch. I can extrude it. That makes it positive or negative space. I can revolve something around an axis in different 360 degrees, 45 degrees, whatever. I can sweep something along a path if I had it, and I can change that sweep shape if I use a loft. And those have to be at different depths or different planes from each other. I can emboss text in or out. I can derive, if I made all this in one part and split it into multiple solids, I could derive all these parts into their own separate parts. And, have, and if I change that main one, all those parts update. That's parametric. I can make a rib by drawing a line. I can import a decal into a sketch and wrap it around a surface. So this is new and updated. So I can import another AutoCAD drawing or anything else into this part. I can unwrap a part even if it's so when you're in sheet metal, you can use a flat pattern. This can unwrap something that's not sheet metal. Now in a solid part. I can make a hole without a sketch already. I don't have to sketch a circle. This has tons of kinds of holes. I can make fillets, multiple kinds in one fillet command, or I can make face fillets, full round fillets. I can make a chamfer in multiple ways. I can shell a plastic part into a uniform wall thickness, like an egg, I could make the shell all the same thickness and remove a face. I can make an angle, um, I can make a surface angled for draft for pulling in an injection molding tool. I can put thread on a shaft or on a surface. I can combine multiple solid parts into positive or negative features. I could thicken something. If I had a surface, this is how you make it solid. I can split a part into multiple parts like that car or maybe a stapler like this. I could split it into a top and a bottom and derive those into their own parts and shell them and put their features in. I don't like this very much. I think this is like scabbing on. If I made a protrusion a certain thickness, then I could direct pull that face and it would add or subtract material. Then people don't know that you've done that. So they go back to the first extrusion and now it's not the right thickness. You can remove a face off something. So you can use a surface to remove material. And then there's a shape generator. So this is using the current, I don't use this very much, to des, uh, design shape, use the shape as a reference for component modifications. We can make reference objects, planes. These are all the ways that we can make work planes to make something else. A mid plane between two planes. I don't have to make it right in the middle. Offset or a plane through a point. Um, this is something that I use a lot. Tangent to a surface and parallel to a plane because I can't sketch on a curved surface. I can make axes because it doesn't automatically put them in there. And those are work features as well that we might use for something. 
points. And I could make another user coordinate system offset something else. I can pattern features, circular, rectangular, or following a sketch, which is really cool. So if I change that sketch, my, my parts move. I can mirror something. And then this is like mud box. You can create a freeform shape and then just push and pull it. And then this is surfacing such as complex curvature. We're not going to go into that, but we can have stress analysis on anything if we apply a material and say what's held down and say what force we're putting on something. You can see if it's going to make it or not. You can see what the deflection might be. And then we could convert a part. If, it's, if we forgot to start in sheet metal, we can convert it to a sheet metal part. So that is our, our um, model uh, menu. We can move bodies, bend a body, and we can copy objects from one place to another. All right, so if I finish that sketch and I say the alias for extrude is E, it brings up this menu. And I'm going to make this bigger so you, so you can see it. Sometimes it comes in huge. That didn't help. Um, so it select, says select the profiles. They have to be completely closed profiles. And I could say start it from a face, but what it's where the extrusion is usually going to start is from my sketch plane. Now, there are two ways to select it. You see how this did not select the entire rectangle. But if you select, that's just a boundary, right? That's a region. But if you select the line, it selects the entire thing. And then I have another boundary, and that's what it would make for me. Now, what are my options? I can push it the other way so that I can see my sketch in front, which I like to do. I can make it symmetric about the sketching plane, and the distance is the overall width, not halfway. Or I can make it asymmetrical, a certain distance in one direction and a certain distance in the other. And so you can see that the gold one is what you're on. If I click on this, that one is that way. And if I said that I'm going to push it this way, I could have it be a dip, a depth, or I could say up to another component or another thing. We'll get a lot more options when we have more features. But I'm going to put this in at two and a half. So I'm just going to highlight all the dimensions that we have so far. And I'm going to push it two and a half inches. And it gives you a visual representation. Now, when I say plus, that means I want to use the same sketch for another extrusion. So I can share a sketch between multiple features. But I'm just going to say OK here. Now, notice that my sketch got embedded. Right here, got turned off. If I want to make it visible, I can right click and turn it visible. I can right click and edit the sketch. Redefining changes the sketch plane that that was created on. And sharing a sketch allows me to use it for more than one feature like that plus did. All right. And then I can collapse it. That way I don't have so many things here. So now I'm going to save this part. And I'm going to save it as the name of the part in all caps. And I can't tell you how important this is. It's tool slide 1433. And if you do not name it in caps, when you have it in an assembly, it's going to come in the parts list as lowercase, and you have to change it. And it's harder. So I'm going to save it like that. So now you see that part one changed just tool slide up at the top and tool slide over here. All right, so I'm going to finish this part, although we just have, we're already past time. You guys can go if you want, but I'm going to go through this part, and I want you to model this part before you come back in on, let's say, uh, Wednesday.
Okay, I want you to model this part and perhaps model the next part by the videos on Wednesday. So I'll put that um, that homework in your announcement. All right, thank you guys for this. And I'm going to stop right now, and then we're going to start the rest of this.